Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Yes, I decided to start a business as our economy is falling apart, so sue me. Hello everyone, it's Lynn again. Since I've had a lot of time on my hands due to quarantine, we all know that spiel. We, we, we are probably tired of that introduction by now. I decided to do something that I've been wanting to do for so long, and that's to start an Etsy shop. In case you don't know, I love art. I have a creative gene in my body. When I was a little kid, I wanted to become a little artist until your Asian parents tell you, no, you can't do that. <laughs> Granted, art is still something I really love to do and I really enjoy and there's such a value in it, especially now when humanity low-key falling apart, where we're kind of living in a semi-dystopian society. We need art more than ever. So with a stationary business, which I am using to sell stickers, art prints, and hopefully enamel pins and patches in the future. For the past month, I have been slaving. I have been grinding and building up this shop and this brand that is Starfruit Press. Today, I'm gonna be showing you my process of creating artwork and also printing and cutting out stickers and pretty much how I planned my shop financially, advertising, advertisements and social media. And granted, I know I'm not finding the cure to cancer. I know I'm not Elon Musk, but nevertheless, I, I had like a passion. I had a little drive. So now I have a little small business. I love the idea of investing time in something that makes you happy to help bring happiness to other people. That's so cheesy. That's that. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the Gouda, the Parmesan. So without further ado, let's jump into this whirlwind of a video. Pew, pew, pew. Let's -a go. to start a business. Good for you. But I hate to be the one to break it to you. But unless your name starts with a D and ends with Arnold J. Trump, no one's gonna give you a small loan of a million dollars to start up your venture. So before you pit your entire life savings into this one idea, here are a few questions you should ask yourself. What are your ideas? Do they need to be developed? Are they any good? And will you have an audience for them? How are your finances looking? Do you need to save up and budget so you can afford certain equipment and time? Are you able to manage this with your life and all of your other responsibilities? And lastly, how is your commitment looking? Do you think that you'll be dedicated and passionate enough to follow this through? I keep most of my ideas in this sketchbook. And here you'll find the original vision board for Starfruit Press. I also made a digital one. Here is a mood board that emulates all the cuteness and wholesomeness vibes that I want my business to have as well. I have sketches of art prints and stickers that I want to make. And prior to quarantine, I had all of my physical artwork professionally scanned into a digital format. And of course, I have to calculate my startup costs. Figuring out my finances and making a budget for my investments is necessary because if Monopoly taught me anything as a child is that families will be torn apart by this game and that losing money is bad. To avoid becoming 1999 Coachella, keeping track of your expenses and how you're going to price your products is vital. Now let's dive straight on into art. I made most of my designs digitally through Procreate, not making children silly, but bringing art to life. I've been using it for a while now, and its controls are really simple and easy to get used to. Plus, it has similar capabilities creatively compared to Photoshop. I do this all on my dad's first gen iPad Pro, so it means it's a little bit slow, sometimes unresponsive, but it works. Generally, I start out by choosing a color palette, drawing out the basic shapes, and then going in with the details with high Highlight, midtones, and shadows. And here are some schmexy time lapses of my artwork. I am no Van Gogh, Picasso, nor Monet, and I would not go as far to say that my artwork or style is ingenious and absolutely original and revolutionary. But if there's anything you should take away from my artwork is that it represents who I am and my personality. You see a spitfire, loud, colorful Vietnamese woman. A woman who really likes making bad puns and enjoys eating fruit and loves watching animes and playing Animal Crossing. I wanted to create art that I could relate to, that other people could relate to, that was playful and fun, and I think that's kind of what I got. up 
up in Procreate, I go straight into Photoshop on my laptop, where I do some fine tuning, add some text, and do any further editing as necessary. I use the Creative Cloud version of Photoshop for literally everything, for YouTube, Instagram, school, for Photoshopping myself onto the spouses of celebrities, and although it's a little bit more techy and less user-friendly than Procreate, it's worth it to invest the time to learn, especially if you want to get into digital art and media. Here, I'm creating the design for my logo and my business card. Due to the increased amount of time you're spending indoors, have you tried to learn a new skill only to hit learning roadblocks, get frustrated, and return to binge watching your current K-drama? Well, Skillshare is here to help teach and encourage you in your pursuit of creativity. As a thriving online community, Skillshare is a place where millions of creatives come together to discover and develop new and old skills alike. With classes dedicated to illustration, graphic design, photography, and much more, you can find one that sparks your interest. I've loved the illustration classes, as it has aided me in building my business, such as this one taught by Jerem Vogel. Digital illustration, learn to use Procreate, which has taught me to utilize Procreate to its every capability. With no ads and less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, Skillshare is a great learning environment that is always launching new classes and here to help you foster creativity. The first 1,000 of you guys, my subscribers, to click the link in this description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and now back to the regular broadcast. Now for an unboxing of all the supplies that we ordered off the internet. We have 110 pound cardstock and its thicker sister, 120 pound cardstock. And then we have not one, not two, but three packages of sticker sheets. Firstly, vinyl mat for weatherproof purposes and regular mat stickers. We have two sets of ink cartridges, some envelopes for mailing, and some flat paper bags comparable to my chest for packaging. Some rather inexpensive tissue paper, all of the toilet paper hoarders are quaking right now. And leaf ri- oh, why are you leafing me, bro? Yeah, get back here. Some pretty leaf ribbon. Now for the big boy machines. This is a face of regret and pain. Okay, I didn't expect the printer to be that big. That's <laughs> what she's saying. Oh, 12 year old boy humor. After figuring out the insuitableness of the box to my thickness, I unwrapped the printer and set it up and it's a wireless connection so the Bluetooth synced up quite nicely and I've never had access to a printer at home in my life so this is quite a luxury, quite ex I also ordered big scissors aka a paper turner and a silhouette portrait which you can program to cut out specific shapes Here's my final setup in my little corner, and since I had so many cardboard boxes left over, I decided to make little organizers, because reusing is sick. And then we were all prepped for printing and cutting. you're gonna be printing and cutting or essentially making your product come to life now as exciting as it may seem inking it up patting up that nice white paper cutting it into the perfect shape chop, chop, chop. but are you ready for all the noise <laughs> As you can hear, those aren't particularly pleasant sounds on the eardrums, and I had to listen to that for hours on end. Let's return to the nice background music, shall we? Let us jump right into printing, which is actually a little bit more complicated than I thought, because I had to learn to adjust the colors and the brightness of my art in order to compensate for discrepancies in printing. What you see digitally on the screen isn't gonna match up with what is printed in real life. So the moral of the story is, print a test copy before printing final copies. And oh, did I print many 
many copies. I felt like I was single-handedly responsible for rising deforestation and for the aggravation of Loraxes all over the world. Now, after getting over that internalized guilt, I started a cut-in. Since I was too impatient to wait for my silhouette to arrive, I did it all by hand, which I instantly learned to regret as I got wrist pains. I soon began to worry that I was getting an onset of carpal tunnel. Yes, the thing that we make fun of teenage boys for getting when they masturbate too much. I, I was afraid of getting that. Luckily, my silhouette came in to the rescue, but was still frustrating to learn because I learned that I cannot outline simple shapes. A lot of my stickers were die cut, meaning that they were unique shapes that I needed to personally draw myself. So I spent ages freehanding all the shapes. Oh, was the undo button used plentiful. The thing is, I learned that if you import it as a PNG image, then a program would automatically detect it as an outline. There are also set shapes you can use, as for these Isabel stickers, I used a rectangle with rounded corners, and that was much easier. And then it was time to put it into the machine and start a cutting. This was my first attempt. Oh, it is grisly. It is horrific. When you're placing your paper onto the cutting mat, it needs to be aligned perfectly. And I developed that precision and accuracy over time. And eventually, I got these lovely cutouts. Having the silhouette definitely took a lot of stress off of my hands. And plus, it was very satisfying to peel back the border paper and just see all the stickers perfectly cut out on the cutting mat. Although I did not stop making imperfections, they did become less frequent over time. And I eventually figured out a rhythm dumb of producing stickers. For my art prints and cardstock items, I did a little bit of hand cutting with the paper cutter. Not going to lie, using a paper cutter made me feel so powerful. 1789 France, I get it. Robespierre, I kinda get it. Using a paper cutter is a little bit more tedious and I hope to outsource one day, but it's currently cheaper for me to just do it all by hand. When I was cutting things, I was often accompanied by YouTube videos and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And it was really easy to get lost in the monotony of the task since it's not very complex. So in a way, it was almost kind of soothing. Sometimes I just get tired of doing big brain things that stapling papers or cutting things apart is really enjoyable and relaxing for me. And before I knew it, I had an entire inventory of products that I had to sell. where you need to advertise your product. In this case, judging a book by its cover does matter and it does happen. Tell me you haven't bought a book because it had a beautiful cover or bought something because it was aesthetically pleasing because of its wrapping. I mean, I can't be the only one, right? The way you brand your product and your company can leave a lasting impression on the customer. As you can probably tell, my job kind of entails social media, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. I think the best example of a social media entrepreneur is Wendy's. I mean, they went for roasting people on Twitter, and now they're Twitch streaming Animal Crossing. Like, I I cannot speak ill of Wendy's. Their spicy nuggets, mmm. Their PR campaigns, top notch. And we're going to start by taking pictures of our products for social media and for Etsy. I'm using this plain poster board, some tissue paper for color, paint chips. I wanted to create a simple background so it wouldn't detract from the product. I did my best to match the color scheme of the product and I got a shooting. And sometimes you gotta hype your subject up. Oh yes, honey, you are doing absolutely amazing. Give me those angles. After I got shots of all my products, I imported it to Lightroom to adjust any lighting. 
And now that we have Instagram worthy photos to post about, let's make our social media handles. You can use anything from Twitter to Facebook to Snapchat even. I just use Instagram because it's where my audience is and it's what I'm the most familiar with. First, I made an email for my business and then I went straight into setting up an Instagram account. The cool thing about Instagram is, is that it has a business feature that lets businesses have access to insights, making Instagram ads, and all that fancy shanty stuff. It acts as a way to communicate, but also to get a new audience. So here you see I'm posting a picture about my Isabel stickers campaign for 2020, and I include hashtags on my posts in order to reach as far as an audience as I can beyond the people who follow me. Hashtags can help your posts show up in people's recommended or their explore page. I've been doing Instagram and YouTube for over five years now, but it took me all of those five years to build up the audience I have, and if you have the patience and the diligence and you work the algorithm, you'll be able to see growth. Now let's go on to our Etsy. I've been using Etsy for a year now since I do sell some presets on Lightroom. Etsy is really user-friendly. It's really easy to set up a shop within minutes. Although the fees they charge you to list items and use their site can be a little bit hefty sometimes. But at the end of the day, it's easy to advertise on since your items will show up in Etsy search engine. Here I am making my listings. I am manually inputting all of my stock items and the quantities and adding descriptions and photos for people to see what it is. The nice thing is that Etsy does a lot of things for you and if they don't, they have little sidebars that explain and guide you through what you need to do. And eventually, I had my entire shop put together. Like, look how cute. Look how cute. And now, for the wrapping. Drop a beat, yo. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. That's really cringy. What am I doing? There should be as much thought that goes in the way you package as the actual product itself because it makes it an experience for the customer to unwrap. We've all gotten that one present that was wrapped in Christmas wrapping paper, but it wasn't Christmas and it was done lousily so it looked like a deformed ball of scotch tape. Here I'm taking my imperfect stickers and I'm using it to decorate the envelopes to give them a little bit more pizzazz. Look how cute and dolled up they are now. And I have an entire box dedicated to my packing items. We have my envelope, some paper bags, stickers I custom made for sealing packages and decorating them, my business cards, and stamps. When I get an order, I assemble the pieces that were listed, some things that were bought in sets like my burb sticker I pre-packaged. I pre Personally, use tissue paper because it's cheaper and also easier on the environment versus plastic. And plus, I really like it because it's thin enough that you can still see the product through it. Add a little freebie and a business card, and then we're ready to seal the package and send it off to its new home. Today is the day! Look, I even put on real people clothes. Like, wow. Thank you. Thank you. The shop launches at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and we are currently 12 minutes away from that. I feel like this is the part of the video where I give a really motivating, inspiring speech that gets you to get out of your freaking pajamas and go do whatever and conquer the world. But honestly, I'm tired, y'all. I kind of almost got carpal tunnel from doing this. We're a minute away. I'm kind of nervous. I'm kind of nervous. Not that deep. Not that deep. It's okay. It's okay. <gasps> it's time. It's time. It's time. I'm pressing publish. It's only been five minutes, but there's a ton of orders coming in. So we're going to start a pack in and then a ship in and then getting these goodies out to y'all. So let's go. Time for sexy time lapses. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It was around this time that I became overwhelmed, not just by the sheer amount of orders because we got 153 orders on opening day, but just by the sheer amount of support and love I felt from you guys because I really had this imposter syndrome going for me where I was thinking, what if no one buys anything? What if I'm just like a fake noodle over here? So the fact that almost everything sold out within half an hour was amazing. It was way more than I could have ever expected. I am so happy that what I've been working on on what I've been making for the past couple of months is going to people like you guys to a better home and I hope you guys love the stickers, the art prints, the artwork as much as I enjoyed creating them. This was a wild journey. I'm not sure if this was informational, funny, or none of the above, or both. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for supporting and loving. Bye!